Hey folks, how's it going? Just have a quick updated uh, look at the Milviz Beaver here. I feel kind of obligated to do this since I think I was uh, one of the more critical people online about the flight dynamics of this airplane when it first came out and I did make a, uh, a review of the airplane that uh, has gotten quite a few views actually. So I kind of feel obligated to, to, to uh, issue a response here. Just to be fair, Milviz has just recently released an updated set of flight dynamics, an updated FDE for the Milviz Beaver. It's available uh, right now. It's May 24th, 2018, and it's available on the Beaver support forum over on the Milviz uh, websites, the Milviz forum. But it sounds like if people respond favorably to this um, this flight dynamics update that they're going to uh, include it in a future uh, update. Just noticed I don't seem to have a visible tail wheel. Now that's weird. I don't know why that is. Uh, well, that's different. Huh. <laughs> well, I mentioned that to him. That's just a visual model, a uh, visual bit of weirdness here. I don't know if it's related to the new flight model or not. Anyway, the important point here is that um, the airplane now flies like it's supposed to. It flies like a tail dragger on the ground. And uh, the, I think the two points I was critical of on in my initial review of this airplane were its ground taxiing handling, which Milviz fixed quite a while ago by making the uh, the tail wheel free castering, uh, which the the real Beaver has a sort of hybrid steerable slash castering tail wheel, which I guess is is uh, difficult to model in flight sim. So they changed it to a castering model, so you can now turn in uh, in tight places, which is I'll show you that, which is you know, good for a bush plane, obviously. But the big deal here, the big deal is the tail behavior on the ground. If you remember my first video, I flew it full, all fuel tanks full, and that's how we're set up today as well. I'll show you the comparison. But if you remember my first video, I was critical about how long it took to get the tail off the ground with full power and full forward elevator during the takeoff roll. Um, that's not typical of beavers. Now, I've never flown a beaver, but I've flown quite a few other real-world tail draggers of a similar size and weight to a beaver, and it's just not how they feel. And you can find plenty of videos on YouTube as well that show uh, that a beaver can pop its tail off the ground nice and quick within the first few seconds of the takeoff roll without even full forward elevator. And so, obviously, that's how a beaver is supposed to fly. The Milviz model did not. You couldn't get the tail off the ground until about 50, 60 miles an hour before. With this new flight dynamics model, it flies like it's supposed to. Uh, my technique when I take off in a tail dragger, and I'm talking real world, is I don't even really reference the airspeed indicator. I apply full power, steer with my feet. After a second or two into the roll, depending on the airplane, I apply forward stick and hold it there until the tail comes off the ground. As the tail eases off the ground, I'm easing off the forward stick pressure until the nose finds the attitude I want it at. It's typically a pretty level attitude, so we're rolling along the ground on the main wheels with the tail in the air, right? As we continue to accelerate, obviously there's more airflow over the elevator. The elevator gets more effective, and as it's getting more effective, I have to continuously ease off more and more back pressure off the stick to keep the airplane's nose in that same attitude until finally we reach a point where all the back pressure's off the stick and the airplane's running along in a level attitude standing up on the main gear with the tail in the air. At that point you know she's ready to fly a little aft stick will raise the nose and pop it off the ground. It works perfectly in the uh, Milviz Beaver now. And the other thing I've been critical of is wheel landings, uh, because no matter how much extra power you carried and how hard you tried to pop the nose forward after you touched down on the main gear in the Milviz Beaver, the tail would just bang onto the ground. Uh, and it doesn't anymore. You can hold the tail up into the ground, or I'm sorry, you can hold the tail up off the ground until you're down to almost taxi speed. And, uh, and so I'm excited about this, and like I said, I felt kind of obligated to... Uh, to issue a demonstration of it since I was kind of critical of it the first time around. And look, this airplane, except for those two things, the tail behavior on the ground on takeoff and landing, except for that, this airplane is my favorite general aviation airplane in flight sim. It is the quintessential bush plane. It's got a beautiful visual model. It's got a fantastic flight model. General handling, departure characteristics that stalls and spins, uh, slow flight, backside of the power curve flying where you're hanging it on the prop and driving it into, into a small strip for a three-point landing. That all has always worked 
fantastic in the Milvis Beaver. The only thing that kept it from being perfect in my eyes uh, was this tail behavior on the ground. So let's take a look at the updated flight dynamics. We're sitting on the ground on the Gilbert Bay airstrip, which is a, uh, a return to misty mooring scenery. It's the same place I did my first test of the Beaver, and you can see that's not even full rudder. You can see she turns nice on the ground now. No more problem with wide turns on the ground. That's maybe half rudder and no differential brake. So ground handling much improved. The subject of this video is takeoff. All fuel tanks are full, which is the same characteristic as my initial test. Milviz said if you leave the aft fuel tank empty, move the CG forward, the tail would get off the ground a little better. Eh, I don't know. Sometimes I thought maybe I saw a little difference. Sometimes I thought it was just subliminal. Now, uh, it does not matter because with the new dynamics, the tail comes off the ground just fine. So let's make sure we're uh, doing this fairly here. Trim set for takeoff. Flap set for takeoff. It's not a systems review, so I don't care about anything else. Here we go. I'm going to apply full power. Actually, not even full power, because we're not that heavy. I'll just apply about 33, 34 inches of uh, manifold pressure here on the gauge. And a second or two into the roll, I'm going to give it forward stick and observe. All right, here we go. There's full forward elevator. And as we accelerate, tail up, and that's actually too low. <laughs> and that's me. That's my fault, the tail banging on the ground. All right, so the nose is where I want it. As we accelerate, I'm easing off the back stick, or the forward stick, continuously releasing front pressure. And she's staying in that level attitude. And there's about neutral stick, and she's ready to fly, and off we go. That is exactly how a tail dragger is supposed to take off. It feels really good. And I'm just going to do a quick teardrop back around here, and we're going to make a wheel landing the opposite direction of that runway we just took off of. So I won't cut the video or anything. This is uh, this is just quick and dirty here. I just, like I said, I felt obligated to respond. I really do appreciate the folks at Milviz listening to all of us who have uh, raised this point about this airplane because it's such a good airplane otherwise. And now it's a good airplane all around. I think it has become the perfect bush plane in flight sim, honestly. All the other things I liked about this airplane, I've tested the departure characteristics with this new flight model. I've tested three-point takeoffs and landings. Uh, everything else remains unchanged, so they didn't... Uh, they didn't do any damage to one part of the flight model in order to improve the other part. They really didn't. It is just... It is really well done now. So we'll use landing flaps. We'll approach at uh, a little slow here. We'll approach about 80 miles an hour. This isn't exactly short field technique. But it's not intended to be. This is just a normal wheel landing. And again, I'm... You know, I've only made a couple takeoffs and landings with the new model, so I'm not particularly good at it. I'm also using a relatively glitchy joystick, so if we, uh, if the pitch control appears twitchy on the ground, that's me. That's not the Milvis flight model. But here we go. We're at idle. I'm going to level off. I'm going to try to brush the mains onto the ground, and then forward stick to hold the tail up. Tails up. Tails up. Tails up. Tails up. Tails up. There's full forward stick. Tail's slowly coming down. And there's three point as we roll through about 35 knots. Or miles per hour, 30 miles per hour. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to work. Not talking about my flying ability in flight sim, talking about the flight model. That is how a tail dragger of this size and weight is supposed to handle. So, well done, Milviz. Thank you guys very much. And, uh,. Yeah, I'll raise the point about the missing tailwheel on the uh, on the forum. That maybe that's a glitch in the install on my machine. I don't know if it would or wouldn't involve the flight dynamics, but you know what? Personally, I would make that trade off all day long to make the plane fly well. But I'm sure it's something they'll uh, they'll get fixed. Obviously, that's just a visual bug. So okay, hopefully this was helpful to anyone who was uh, still on the fence about this thing, or hopefully it'll convince you to try the new flight dynamics. Because I'll tell you what. Here, watch from the outside. Full power. Tails up. Look at that. We can almost nose over. Just a couple seconds into the roll.
Yeah. So thank you, Milvez. Great job, guys.